And so I think this then was his revenge against Putin, trying to expose Putin as being weak and not really having it all together. Uh, both of them yesterday then had an interest in stepping back. I think from Prigozhin's point of view, he wants to be seen as a Russian hero. He wants to be seen as defending the interests of the state against weak leaders. And so he didn't want to be seen as attacking the state in Moscow. Putin, I don't think, had a choice. He did not have confidence that his own people would stick with him. So he had to offer Prigozhin a way forward, a way out, if you will, to Belarus. And now I don't think we've seen the last of this. I don't see how Putin can stay in power and have been shown to have caved to Prigozhin in this way. And therefore, I think he will go after him. And I think Prigozhin is counting on that. And that is uh, something that I think he needs in order to, again, go after a bigger role in taking on the military apparatus of the country, but being justified in doing it. Well, um, I think that Mr. Putin is um, is going to try to reconsolidate. He's going to try to return to his capital and show that he was in charge the whole time and there's nothing to worry about. He will start working with the other klepto kleptocrats or oligarchs, whatever you want to call them, that are around him and try to reconstitute his power base that is fraying around him. And he will try to uh, paint this as a victory that he was able to bloodlessly turn this off and, and get everything back in order. And I think, as I said before, if I was Mr. Pergozin, I would invest in some really good security cards like others that have opposed Mr. Putin. He'll either take a nosedive off the third floor balcony or he'll get a polonium headache. And, and be gone. But I think that Mr. Putin is going to work hard to reconsolidate the vision that he's in control, all is calm, and let's get back to uh, killing Ukrainians. It is very likely that you're going to see Putin or people around him and his own paramilitary forces trying to go after Prigozhin. Uh, I, I think that having been humiliated the way he has been. He's going to try to do that. There's even one rumor that I saw that Prigozhin is already in custody somewhere. I don't know if that's true, but that's one of the things that people are saying. If that happens and uh, there is an attempt to go after Prigozhin, Prigozhin will publicize that and use that as justification for why he should be pushing back again and the military should join him in getting rid of Putin. I think that is the, the direction that this is likely to take over the next week or so. I think it'll be very interesting for us to, to see if we ever see Shoigu and Gerasimov again. Will they just be quietly removed from power? Um, that we don't know. Uh, people who fled Moscow when this was happening, like Medvedev, do we see him again? Uh, then you have whatever is actually going on behind the scenes. You call it a Game of Thrones situation. Uh, Putin, Prigozhin, whoever was with Prigozhin in this, there is clearly something going on about who is really going to be in power and what the future direction is going to be. Uh, and it seems very clear that Putin has been weakened by this. Certainly, certainly this begins to open some doors of opportunity, but we don't go rushing headlong through them. We take them as they are applicable to the plan that uh, Ukraine has already set out. His power base has uh, continued to erode, 
and the fact that he has now multiple people, uh, even more than Prigozhin, talking about this war was a mistake and uh, we need to get out of it. Um, so I, I think that that Mr. Putin's ability to uh, project nuclear power is going to get weaker rather than stronger. Yeah. So one of the outcomes, I believe, of the last 36 hours, maybe 48 hours, is that the institutions that we have long seen as being very secure in Russia are slowly unraveling. So for the last uh, 500 days or so, we have seen that the Russian war machine is not what we thought it was, and that there are serious issues of its leadership and who's calling the shots, and that this cancer of corruption whereby tanks arrive at the front line without laser range binders and radios and things that have been pilfered to make money, this cancer of corruption inside the military has truly hamstrung it and its kit along the way. And so the whole institution of the military now, the the appearance of what the Russian military is, is much diminished. Uh, I think what Ukraine needs to do is press every advantage it has to use this moment to get its territory back. And then as this war eventually stabilizes and presumably on the border, uh, I think NATO is going to have to come back to the idea of Ukrainian membership in NATO. Uh, Putin has only been willing to attack countries that are not members of NATO. And if we don't see at the end of this war that Ukraine is indeed a member, and remember, it's a democratic country, the largest country in Europe, and it will have the largest, most capable military in Europe. If we don't bring them into NATO as a member, Putin will be tempted to regroup and attack again if he's still in power. <laughs> Oh, my God.